Hello again. We're continuing with Chapter 4. Today we're going to go through some examples. These examples are very similar to the questions on the test. There are three issues in every example. Uh, there's a person in the example. Are they a covered member or not? There's a second person. Is that second person immediate family or close relative? And then is it the amount of material or not. So those issues need to be identified in every problem if you prepare for the test. Let's talk about audit staff now because that's what you're all going to be next year. Uh, all the examples are San Luis Obispo clients. So we're talking about audit clients in the San Luis Obispo office. Are all audit staff in the San Luis Obispo office prohibited from owning stock in a client? What about their spouses? Well, that depends. Uh, are the staff assigned to the engagement? If the staff are assigned to the engagement, then they're covered members. Their spouse is immediate family. So if either the covered member or their immediate family owns stock, it would impair independence. However, if the staff is not assigned uh, to the client, then the staff will not impair independence unless they or some group of which they're a member uh, owns more than 5% of the client. What about their parents? Well, again, if the staff is not assigned to the engagement, they're not covered member, their parents are close relatives, and their parents could own any amount of stock in that client. If the staff member is assigned to the engagement, then they'd be a covered member. Their parents are close relatives and their parents could own stock as long as it was not material to the parents. Now, this materiality and the 5% are due to two different things. So the last time I checked, Apple had a market value of $800 million. Uh, if I owned 1% of Apple, that would be $8 billion. Uh, is that material? Yeah. So the 5% is a Part B rule, not a Part A rule. Are all staff assigned to the engagement prohibited from investing in a diversified mutual fund that owns stock in the client. So here we've got the staff assigned to the engagement are covered members. We're auditing Intel. Uh, we own, we invest in a Fidelity mutual fund. The mutual fund owns stock in Intel. It will probably not impair independence if it's a diversified mutual fund. There's a formula to figure out how much stock the mutual fund owns, what percent of the company the mutual fund owns, what percent of the mutual fund you own. But in all likelihood, um, diversified mutual funds typically do not impair independence. So the staff's a covered member, but this is an indirect investment and uh, if the amount of the investment is immaterial to the staff, it definitely, under no conditions, would impair independence. And typically, it won't impair independence, even if the amount is material to the staff auditor. Let's talk about managers now. Are all audit managers in the engagement office prohibited from owning stock in a client? No. If the audit manager is assigned to the engagement, then they're a covered member. If they're not assigned to the engagement, they're not a covered member. What if the amount's immaterial? Well, if they are not assigned to the engagement, they're not a covered member, it wouldn't make any difference whether the amount was material or immaterial. It would not impair independence. If the audit manager is assigned to the engagement, then they are a covered member and any financial interest in the client would impair independence. What about their spouses? 
spouse is immediate family, so the same rules apply to the spouse as to the audit manager. In addition to audit managers in a position to influence the engagement, are there any other managers in the engagement office who might be prohibited from owning stock in the client? Well, tax manager, consulting manager, any manager in the office who provides more than 10 hours of non-audit service becomes a covered member. So if the tax person provides 20 hours of tax services, then they become a covered member. If the consulting partner provides more than 50 hours of consulting work, they become a, cons a covered member. Again, spouses are immediate family. If uh, the manager is a covered member, then if his ownership would impair independence, their spouse's ownership would also impair independence. Partners. Are all partners in the firm prohibited from owning any stock in a client? No, that's not correct. It's all partners in the engagement office. Uh, what if the amount's immaterial? If you're a partner in the engagement office, then you are a covered member. It doesn't make any difference whether the amount is material or immaterial. If you're a covered member, any financial and direct financial interest in the client will impair independence. What about your children? Are they dependent? If they're dependent, then they become immediate family and the same rules apply to them as apply to the covered member. If your children are not dependent, if they're out of the house and not dependent, and you are a covered member, then your children's investment will impair independence if the amount is material to them. If the amount is not material to them, it will not impair independence. What about partners in the Phoenix office? This is a San Luis Obispo client. Well, if a partner's in the Phoenix office, they're not a covered member, I'm assuming they're not assigned to the engagement. If they're not a covered member, they can own stock in the client as long as it doesn't exceed 5% of the equity in the client. A tax partner has provided tax advisory work for the audit client. Okay, how much? If it's more than 10 hours, then the tax partner becomes a covered member. Her sister owns stock in the client. So if the tax partner provided less than 10 hours of tax work, they are not a covered member and her sister can own all the stock she wants. If the tax partner provided more than 10 hours of tax work for the client, then the partner becomes a covered member and her sister can own stock as long as the amount is not material to the sister. If the amount of stock the sister owns in the client is material to her, then it will impair independence. We also need to think about critical periods of time. Financial interest and positions equivalent to being a member of management are very different. Uh, for positions similar to being a member of management, it's both the period covered by the financial statements and the period of the engagement. So we've got the period covered by the financial statements is the calendar year 2019. We begin the engagement in January. We issue the opinion in March. Okay, it's okay if this is a new client, it's okay to have a financial interest during the period covered by the financial statements. It's not okay to have a financial interest in the period of the engagement. Any capacity similar to management is prohibited during both the period covered by the financial statements and the period of the engagement. 
The staff person owns stock in the client. They will be assigned to the engagement. They'll become a covered member then. Can they sell their stock before the audit begins without jeopardizing the firm's engagement? Yes. So if they own stock, so we picked up the client on January 1st, 2020, we'll pretend. We're going to start work late in January. Uh, if we went out to bid in July, the staff person became aware they were out for bid. The firm will send out a letter to everybody. The staff person sold their stock. So that financial interest can be severed instantly. The moment the staff person sells their stock, they no longer benefit if the price of the stock goes up, nor are they harmed if the price of the stock goes down. Financial interest can be severed virtually instantly. So it is okay to own stock during the period of covered by the financial statements on a new client, uh, as long as you get rid of that stock before the engagement begins. The engagement partner, the person who's going to become the engagement partner, owns stock in the client. Can they sell their stock before the audit begins without jeopardizing the firm's independence? Yes, it's the same scenario. Um, the letter goes out. Uh, the partner realizes, oh, guys, this is probably going to become a client. They sell their stock. That they're not prohibited from having a financial interest during the period of the financial statements, only during the period of the engagement. So if you get rid of the stock before it becomes a client, before the engagement begins, independence will not be impaired. Can a partner in the engagement office resign her position on the client's board of directors before the audit begins without jeopardizing independence? No. So again, we went out to bid for the client in July. Uh, the partner was on the board of directors and when they went out to bid, uh, she resigned from the board of directors in July before they went out to bid. Uh, but this is a position similar to management. And these type of relationships can't be severed as easily as a financial relationship. Think about it. When she was on the board, do you think she became friends with the CFO? Do you think she became friends with the CEO? Did she get to know these people? Those type of relationships don't stop instantly when she resigns from the board of directors. So this would impair independence. Positions equivalent to being management. Uh, any position similar to being a member of management of the company. The example we'll usually use is on the board of directors. Uh, there's one more very short presentation where we're going to pick up some of the odds and ends at the end of the chapter. Thank you.